Hey Grains, welcome to the episode called Today, Ruining Your Childhood. In all seriousness, today we're going to be testing two craft kits that do the exact same thing of making your own DIY enamel pins. Enamel pins are so big right now, so popular, very, very, very popular. And so seeing a craft kit that promises that you can make your own enamel pins got me pretty interested. As you saw, the first kit I have in my hands is a Harry Potter enamel set. This was recommended to me on Twitter by one of you grains. Thank you very much. And the next one is an Alex DIY craft kit. And Alex DIY is a pretty known brand, so I'm still pretty curious to see which one is better. Which one is cash? Which one is trash? The fun thing is that both of these kits... Kits? Kits? cost $15 each. The biggest difference that I can see on a surface level is that the Harry Potter one makes eight designs, whereas the Alex DIY promises 12 designs. So I think it's only fair since I baited you with Harry Potter to give you Harry Potter. So let's start with that one. So the interesting thing on this box is it seems that the Harry Potter designs are technically made with some kind of powder. I'm not quite sure. It looks like we're pouring powder. I could be wrong, but that's that's pretty much what is shown in the front. And also, this kit is Warner Brothers Official, which means it's licensed to Mattel. This is not a little company, it's a company that's been there for the longest time ever. I remember hearing the name Mattel ever since I was a little green. And as soon as we turn the box around, oh my god, I have my allergy words right there. Companies that say, You get everything you need! has started to become like some kind of reaction for me because more often than not they don't give you everything you need. I could be wrong. I don't know. So I'm really curious to see because, wait right here. <clears throat> yup. It has two star rating on Amazon. Ah uh, yeah, the salt's gonna come out and play today. <laughs> what? Why do I enjoy this so much? You know why? Because you grains encourage me. You're making me saltier because you're salty and then we're a vast ocean of little salt grains and we're spreading. So be careful because you're encouraging my behavior. Shame on you. Shame. All right, time to see what we get inside. Here's what we get. A colored instructional sheet. Eight absolutely adorable pins. And yes, they're metallic and pretty heavy. We have Ron, a tie, Harry, Hedwig, a sorting hat, a letter, Hermione, and the platform. We also get eight bottles of color with no labels whatsoever to let us know what colors they are. I have to technically make the assumption that this is the color black, although it looks pretty salt peppery brown. And we get two of these. I'm not quite sure which one is the lighter and which one is the darker skin tone. Or are they even not skin tones? So right off the bat, it would be helpful if we had some kind of labeling, other than the label of the company, of what colors are what. Next we have a weird crusty brush. Mattel, what's going on? What's going on there? What is this even? Then we have the work surface, and I'm going to assume these are the pin backings. All right, where's, where's the instruction? So, according to this, remember how I said companies that write everything you need included are a bunch of liars? Well, it seems this is no different than usual, because look at the instruction sheet. Required, but not included. Oven and parchment paper. I don't carry oven paper, which I have no idea what <clears throat> oh, the salt. It's making my voice crack because it's like, oh baby, I'm coming tonight. So we need oven paper, which I have no idea what that is, and I don't carry parchment paper because I don't bake. But the kit clearly said everything you need. I mean, I don't expect them to put the oven in there, but come on. Come on. Please. Please. Alright, uh, just so, I'm gonna go shopping now for oven paper and parchment paper. Am I disappointed? Yeah, but I'm not angry. I'm just disappointed. All right, so here we are with the parchment paper. Apparently nobody knows what oven paper is. It's supposed to be the same thing. And the instructions really didn't say to use a different oven or parchment. They just said parchment paper. So now we're supposed to take this crusty thing because it's pretty dirty straight from the box. And all we're supposed to do is take whatever design we want and just push it inside and that should hold it together. It should. 
It should pin right inside. Okay, what is going on here? We're supposed to be able to push this pin inside this rubbery thing. And it's not pushing through. What about if we push this way? That is dangerous. But it's still not going through. What's going on here? Come on, Warner Brothers. Come on. And the thing is, I highly doubt we're supposed to use this because it is not mentioned in the instructions. And these are plastic, so they're not supposed to be going in the oven. I'll try anyways. Let, let, you know, let's just try. There we go. Or not. Okay, so at least we have it in there. I don't need to keep this in the oven. So one thing to note, try to push it with this little device thing. Oh my god, why aren't you opening? Oh my god. Open! So blue doesn't want to open, maybe you just have to force it. There we go. Oh my god! That's how much tooth pressure I have to put to get it to open, so... I got quite the jaw there. So pretty much we just have to remove the little cap on top and replace it with the pori cap. Since these two seem to be like browns, and on the box itself we have the dark brown up here and the lighter brown, I'm going to assume that this is a lighter brown, so we'll go with that. The reason I chose the sorting hat is because on this channel we don't discriminate, regardless what house you're in, unless you're in Hufflepuff. If you're in Hufflepuff, we just love you a little more. I'm Ravenclaw, by the way. Just, just, I'm just saying, I'm Ravenclaw. Let me know what house you're in. Very curious. So I'm going to start inside and make my way outside. I have no idea how this little powdery thing behaves, so let's go ahead and do that. That's why we have the brush. We could just supposedly push things out of the way. All right, let's... Oh, oh, I don't even have to squeeze. Oh boy. Okay, so be very careful. So I'm just gonna put the powder and then deal with it as I'm pushing it around. Just letting you grains know this is a little more difficult to do because because camera is in the way. A few moments later. So here's the sorting hat so far. It's not impossible. It is pretty clunky with a brush that just goes in every direction. So even though you're trying to be very... What was I saying? So even though it does take a little time and a little concentration, you really have to get really close to those little pellets. But the concept is pretty straightforward. Let's go ahead and put the other colors. Alright, so here it is. It's actually looking really cute. I have a pretty... Uh, I have a, a hunch? A hunch? A hunch. I have a feeling that the biggest issue is going to come when we bake this. So we're supposed to bake it for 25 minutes at 425 degrees Fahrenheit or my Celsius people, 220 Celsius. I'm going to go ahead and pop it in the oven and then we have to let it cool for 15 minutes. Let's cross our fingers. A little longer than a few minutes later. This, my little grains, is what we call a load of salt. So as you can see, it did melt, but the beads seem to have melted on their own without really fusing or evening out. And I did follow their instructions specifically as they said, <clears throat> crystals should be level with the top edge of the pin. And I'll be slightly a little more honest than that. I filled it slightly higher because I knew that something that melts is going to just kind of go lower, which means that if you really wanted to fill the gaps, you have to go with over and over and over. And again, I left this in the oven for 40 minutes, not 25. Because at 25 minutes, you could still see each individual grain. They're not grains like us. They're grains that just don't cooperate. And even though I really love the pins that come in this set, this set as a whole does not work together. After reading the reviews on Amazon, most people have been complaining that these little bee things just don't melt properly. And some people just went ahead and figured out different ways to color them in. Even though we did do the effort of making this, they make it look so smooth. And I can guarantee you, this is most likely colored in digitally. Er, me. Good. This is digital. Arr. So even though I love all things Harry Potter, this kit goes straight in the trash. Mind you, I'm still keeping those little pins because they're adorable. Our next victim, I mean review, is the Alex DIY pin set. This kit has me really curious for one main reason. The outside of the box says air dry paint. See? Didn't think I was clever enough to catch that? What kind of other paints are there? I thought all paints dried by air. If you greens know any other paint that dries any other way, except for ceramic paints, still air dries though. 
The designs are pretty cute. They're really standard for emoji type Instagrammy just the design that they keep. I don't know why I'm doing this because it's pretty it's pretty generic. I mean we have unicorns, we have the peace sign, we have gems, we have ice creams, we have emoji looking things. It's standard. And it seems like they're also adding some findings so you can connect one enamel pin to the other. All right, time to see what we get inside. Here's what we get inside. Five vibrant colors and white. The instructional colored sheet. The dabbing tool that we're going to be picking the paint from and then putting it onto the pins. Iridescent glitter, some findings. And the 12 designs for the enamel pin bases. They do say not to remove the pins from this pack because we will be decorating on there since it's the most stable thing. Unlike that Harry Potter thing that we kept trying to... Okay, stop thinking about the Harry Potter now, let's focus on this one. So I decided I'm going to go ahead and do the unicorn, but my unicorn does not follow anyone's rules. It doesn't want to be pink and blue. My unicorn wants to be green and purple. So it has its own choices, and I respect that. So they said we can use this part here to put the paint on. I'm really curious to know the quality and the thickness of the paint itself. I may or may not have had a tiny squirting accident. Get your mind out of the gutter! And it's quite liquidy, but I guess it has to be, otherwise we wouldn't be able to pick it up and put it inside the unicorn's hair. All right, so now we just have to pick it up like so and just kind of dab it inside this area here. Seems to be working pretty well. Quite surprised. Hmm. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and color the rest of the unicorn. I'm going to do the interchangeable for the hair, and then white for the head and the staple gold for the horn. They do say while it's still wet to go ahead and put the glitter, and I want to see what the glitter looks like, so I'm definitely doing that. Now the only thing left to do is wait a few hours. They didn't say how long, just a few hours. And we'll see how it looks like. Many hours later. All right, so here is the moment of truth. We should be able to pop it right out. And I have to admit, it was easy to make, it got me focused, it had playability, it's, it's really cute. Now for the glitter test. It seems for the most part to stay. There is that one loose glitter, but other than that, it's staying on. And so now the question of the day, is this worth your cash or does it go in the trash? I think from, oh my god, what happened? <laughs> I think from my level of being impressed with this kit, it is most definitely 100%, 100%, 100% worth your money. So if you have $15 and you're looking for a craft kit to get for yourself or for someone else, specifically when it comes to enamel pins, I can highly recommend the Alex DIY kit. Make sure you stay clear from the Harry Potter kit. It is an absolute waste of money, the materials don't work together, and even the instructions don't help you put it together. And let's be clear, you can only make one pin at a time. Whereas when it comes to the Alex DIY, you can make multiple kits at the same time because even if you don't have that tool thing, you can use a toothpick or your friend can use a toothpick. Wow, the salt wants to come out non-stop, my voice keeps on cracking. I feel like if we had different colors for these ones, it would be fantastic to actually make the Harry Potter ones, but with this method. We could probably get away with most of it though. We just don't have any gorgeous browns. Let me know, would you still get the Harry Potter one and just because the enamel pins are absolutely adorable, I'm, I'm, I'm almost sure that these are out of the market now. This week's shoutouts go to Soonpla LKR, Sarah Green, Ioannis Skardasis and Meham Madan. Remember, if you want a shout out in my videos, don't forget to hashtag Notification Squad in the comment section below within the first five hours of a video's release, or hashtag NerdyCraft on Instagram or Twitter anytime with any of your creations. If you want to watch the previous Capture Trash, make sure you check it up here. And if you want to watch a video YouTube thinks is just right for your mood right now, make sure you check it out down here. Until then, I will see you grains in the next video.